Can All you right. hear me now? Very loud and clear. Yeah, good evening, everybody, and welcome once again to um, the CPP retreat. I'm just glad that everybody is here this evening. And yes. I believe that uh, we are going to have a wonderful time today. But first, we are going to start by praying this, um, this evening. We are going to pray, and I'm calling upon who is ready to lead us in prayer today. Just a moment. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, ma'am. Yeah. So can someone lead us in prayers, please? Hello, okay, I'm going to call at random. Sister Chinyere, please lead us in prayer. Hello, Sister Chinyere, are you with us? Can you lead us in prayer, please? Hello, good evening all. Uh, good can evening, you hear me? Welcome. Yeah. I can hear you now. Can you hear me? Such a privilege to be among the saints this evening. Hello. Yeah, go ahead, since we can hear you. Yeah, please. Oh, Father, we thank. Shall we pray? Father, yeah. thank you for the opportunity you have given us to be in your presence today. We glorify your holy name. Thank you, because we know that even before today, you know it's going to be like this. Father, oh, thank you. For you. Uh, you are the one that orchestrated it. Holy Spirit, come and take control. We are here to Amen. dine at your table. We are here to feast at your table. Father, feed us. Father, Amen. feed us. We are Amen. hungry for you. We are hungry. As we have come, feed us. Because in your storehouse, there is plenty. We have come to take that which you have prepared for us. For you say, come, for all things are ready. Those already things that you have for us today, we have come to partake. That which, you know, that it is for us, that which you have for us, oh Lord. Father, may it not elude us in the name of Jesus. Father, Amen. as we are about to take it, oh Lord, may it be to your glory. And at the end, every other, every other thing shall be as Pride them to your holy name because you are the mighty God and nobody can outgive you. As we have come here, as we are taking, we go out and give it out as you will give it to us, to your glory, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And as we are Amen. starting, we are starting in the name of the Father and of the Son amen. and of the amen. Holy Spirit. Amen, amen and amen. 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 God bless you. Um, I, I would like to call upon um, Esther Chaw to lead us in worship. Esther, are you in the house tonight? Yes, ma'am. Connect and begin to worship with us. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We give you glory, Lord, and we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, and we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. We give you glory. We give you glory, Lord. And we honor you. We give you glory, Lord. And we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. You are wonderful. You are worthy, oh Lord. Yes, you are faithful, God. Oh, you are worthy to be praised. Oh, Lord. You are 
all that I mentioned to you, oh, someday you will be, you are kind, but you are bigger than what we call you, oh, you are kind, you are kind. You are bigger than what we call you, Jesus. You are good. You are kind. You are bigger than what we call you. Hey, you are good. You are you are, you are, kind. Kind. You are bigger than what we call you. Big, big, big. God, you are good. The great you I am are God. You, you yes. are bigger than what we call you. Amen. Hey, you are good. You, you, are God. God. you are bigger than what we call you. You are bigger than what we call you. You are worthy of our praise. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Uh, God bless you, sis, for that wonderful worship. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for leading us tonight. I just feel that we should just go ahead and blast in tongues and just worship. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Esther. Sure, I job for that wonderful worship. We bless God for your life. Amen. Ah, wonderful people. I welcome you once again. Good evening, everybody. If you can you can hear me, say good evening back. I wave good evening. Your hand. Good evening, mom. Yeah, God bless you all. Good evening. I, I, I just want to welcome each and every one of us. And I'm so we are so grateful to have you. Uh, to uh, you know, to, to see this day once again. You know, this is the last day of the month. 
of June and yeah. also the end of the first half of 2023. Why don't you just say thank you, Lord Jesus? Because thank so many you, Jesus. Thank, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you Amen. praise. Amen. From the Ever Evergreen family, we say a big welcome to each and every one of you. And um, everyone joining us on Zoom and on Facebook on this mid-year uh, mid virtual retreat. It is truly a pleasure to have all of you join us today as we embark on this journey of reflection, growth and rejuvenation. It is a chance for us to unwind and recharge and nourish our minds, bodies and souls. This program is designed to inspire and educate and empower all participants not just the leaders here, but all participants. The retreat is here to offer opportunities for meaningful connections, friendship, and a time of reflection, allowing participation to slow down, listen to our inner voice, and to prioritize our well-being. The Evergreen family extends gratitude to all participants for their presence tonight. We are not taking it for granted. We encourage you to you know, fully immense yourself in, in this experience we are going to have tonight and we are going to ex expose ourselves tonight and be open to new ideas and perspective. May this retreat be a time of revival for us, a time of discovery, a time of transformation, creating lasting memories. I bet you are going to have a wonderful night, a time tonight. God bless you all for being here. It shall be a defining moment indeed for us. God bless you. Um, before we go on, um, for housekeeping, there are two or one or two um, two rules we are going to observe in the house. Though all of us are almost observing it, I thank you for that, but let's still listen to it. For housekeeping, let us keep our minds muted so that we can hear whoever that is speaking. Let us also use our journals. I hope everybody came with their journals tonight because we are going to be writing down a lot of lessons. Let us also engage in the comment session. I also encourage each and every one of you to participate in the self-evaluation assessment when it is time. Then watch out for your friends that are not here, the group members that are not here, please call them on the phone. That is going to be a wonderful night. Send them the link so that they can join either on, on Zoom or Facebook. Please make sure you share this program. God bless you. Um, I will not hesitate to also invite uh, the visioneer of this uh, great group. Uh, we call ourselves the Covenant Prayer Partners where we pray for so many people. We pray for ourselves, we pray for different things concerning the nations, concerning people, individuals and, our, and for ourselves. I want to just thank God for her life. She's a lover of God. And this is a person of uh, Kemi Wakeze. I introduce her because I know that she loves God so much. For just listening to this call, I just bless God for her life. And I invite her to take over to you know, talk to us about God because that's what she knows how to do best. Let's listen to her and jot down if possible. I, I hope we are all ready tonight to listen to her. God bless you, ma'am. Please take it away. Amen. Thank you Amen. for tonight. <laughs> Thank you so much, Sister Mercy. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I hope you can hear me clearly. Yeah, we can. Okay, okay. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. That's an awesome start for the, from the prayer to the worship. And to the welcome address by Sister Mercy, she's going to introduce herself better so she know you will know who she is. She's the one handling our assessment, so you better be ready because she's a prof, and then um, be ready to write and write and write. But I trust God for um, a redefining and a defining moment this night, and then we have come to hear from God, not from any man. And then I pray that we're not going to remain the same. I want to share my screen. I want to share my screen so we can take it up from there. Uh, please, can you see my screen? Um, can you see my screen, please? Let me get from the comment section if you can see it. Uh, Leka Tele Berushki Lantra Dia Dei Zakaba. 
So let me see from the chat if you can see my screen, please. Leko Sofra DNA Skilabero Shada da 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 da. Yes, thank you, sis. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yes, it's up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much. Okay. We're taking it up and we're going right into what we have. And so, Father, we ask that, Lord, once again, you speak to us, you speak to our hearts, that your name alone will be glorified in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, speak to our hearts, open our eyes of understanding, enlighten our eyes of understanding, open our ears to hear you, and open our hearts to understand and to receive, O oh God Almighty, what you have for us. For everyone on this call, on Zoom, and on Facebook, and those that will watch later, we ask that the Holy Spirit, the sweet Spirit, the best teacher, will give us deeper and a quick understanding of all that we to know about becoming, that we may live fulfilling your plan and purpose for our lives living a, moon, a meaningful and a fulfilled life. We trust the Holy Spirit. Have your way, O oh God, and let your name alone be praised. None of me, but all of you, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Okay, so we're going in right now into what we have. Roadmap to becoming. The roadmap to becoming. I need a timekeeper. So I will know once my time is up. Sister Mercy, please just send me a private message once my time is up. So because we have a lot to cover tonight. And I trust God. Let it let us let us make it interactive and then I trust God to help us tonight in the name of Jesus. So to the road map the road map roadmap to becoming. Here is the big question that I believe that after this retreat, after today's program. We must be able to fit in this where I put the be, the do, the have, and the become. I pray that we'll be able to answer it rightly, you know, personalizing it. What must I be in order to do what I must do so I can have what I need to have in order to become who God has called me to be? I've highlighted four key words that we're going to be looking at this night. Be do have and become and jeremiah 1 chapter uh, chapter 1 and verse 5 i always love this when it comes to purpose that before i shaped you this god speaking to jeremiah before i shaped you in the womb i knew all about you before you saw the light of day i had i had only plans for you a prophet, I have made you to nation. That is what I had, I had in mind for you. And I love Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11. That's why I know the thought that I have towards you. So the thing is good for us is to have goals. It's good for us to desire great things. But we must be in alignment with the one who created us, the one that had planned already, even before we were conceived. So what are those things that I must be? For me to do the right thing that I must have in my hand, what is necessary for me to have? So I have to become that person, that individual that God has designed me to be. I am different from Sister Mercy. What God has designed me to be is, is, is totally different from what God has designed Sister Mercy to be. It's totally different from what he has designed Sister Stella to be. So this is not how we do, it's not copy and paste. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen that way to copy and paste and say, okay, I love this person's lifestyle. I love how this person, this person is fulfilling his or purpose. Okay, I want to copy that side. No, we must understand who God has called us to be. So I said, okay, what is the roadmap? The roadmap is the plan or strategy intended. Please, let's mute ourselves. A plan or strategy that is intended to achieve a particular goal. That is strategy set to take, plan, the things that must be done. What is goal? We know goal to be something we consciously work towards and hope to have. Oh, I want to write a book. I want to do this. I want to do that. There is a goal. There is something we are aiming at. There is a vision. There is something we, can, we are perceiving. There is something we are seeing. That is how to set up a goal. It is what gives direction to life and actions that we do. 
okay, I want to do this, this and this and this and the things I know will lead me there. It is what gives direction to life and actions, just like a map showing you where you where to go in order to reach your desired destination. For many of us that use GPS, we put it, okay, I'm going to this, even if you have not been there before, and you follow the route and said, okay, turn left, turn right, there is a road map. If you're going to the right direction, if you're going to the right destination. So if I want to become, I don't just have to follow any path. I must know what is expected of me. Commit, your, commit everything, Psalm 37 verse 5. Commit everything you do to the Lord. Trust him and he will help you. There is a way that looks unless enough. Look again, it leads straight to hell. Then the last scripture, Psalm 25 verse 4. Direct me, Yahweh, to have my journey so I can experience your plan for my life. Reveal the last part that are pleasing to you. So this is showing that even though we have some goals, we have some determinations, we have some decisions that we are making, we cannot do this outside God. To become, there are some things that we must do, the roadmap that we must follow. So let's look at a few scriptures and quotes as we run. First one is from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 11. And the BB is the basic, um, in, I mean, Bible in basic English. That's BB, Bible in basic English. For I am conscious, I am conscious of my thoughts about you. That is the Lord speaking. Says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you up at the end. God is conscious. God is intentional. No one is born by accident. Oh, we were not expecting you. Your pregnancy just came back. No one is by accident. So I said, if I am conscious of your thoughts about you, I am conscious of my thoughts about you. So that should make us special that, no, I'm not an ordinary person. God is conscious about me. God is thoughtful of me. God is intentional about me. The second scripture, here is Jordan was conscious again. Said, and we are conscious. God is conscious of his thought towards me. That I am certain and I am conscious that all things must work together for my good. And he says, and we are conscious that all things are working together for good to those who have love for God and who have been marked out by his purpose. So once we see that we are God's lover, that we love God, and we know that we are on the earth to fulfill the purpose. We are not here to just occupy space. We are conscious that no matter the situation, no matter the season that we go through, God is making things to work together for our good. Amen. The first scripture, First Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, but you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people who are God's own possession. You have become, and when I saw the word become, I said, yes. You have become those people. So that, so our becoming is not just for becoming sick. There is a purpose to our becoming. We will get there what it means to become. So you have become those people so that you may speak of the wonderful act of the one who called you out of darkness. Into his amazing life. Into his amazing life. I'm thinking, please, let's mute ourselves. I'm trying to see. Okay. I'm trying to mute everybody. When it's time, I will unmute us. Please try to understand us. Thank you. Okay. So let's look at this three quotes. The first one by Oprah Winfrey. There is no greater gift you can give or receive than to honor your calling. It's why you were born. No one is born by accident. And how you become most fully alive. We can say the word becoming. I think I'm even, you know, we are understanding the word becoming even before we get to the becoming. Amen. Then the uh, Bishop TPJ says, if you can't figure out your purpose, figure out your passion, for your passion will lead you right into your purpose. This is, uh, I don't understand my purpose. I'm not sure I have a purpose. Hey, no one, like I said, and I'll continue to say, no one is by accident. We all have our purpose. 
God has an assignment for us. Anytime we wake up in the morning and open our eyes, it's to remind us and to tell us that there is an assignment that God has prepared for us. So all we need to do is, God, thank you for keeping me awake for this assignment you have prepared for me. Help me to know if we don't understand yet. And let's ask for clarity that we may walk in line with God's plan and purpose for our lives. And the last quote by Tom C. Having a purpose is the difference between making a living and making a life. Making a living and making a life. Making a living, I go to work, I'm earning this, I'm doing that, just to, just to keep up, just to make sure I have the things that I need. But making a life is about becoming. Making a life is about impact. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. So now we're going to um, into the, the, the four um, steps, the roadmap that we're taking. We're looking at the being first. We have the being, we have the do, we have the having before becoming. So now the being, hallelujah. Number one, on our journey of becoming, we must be one. These are the things that we must be. We must be spiritual. Purpose is spiritual. Because it's all about God. Purpose is not about us. It's about God. So we have to be spiritual. We are not, there are Christians that are carnal. These ones, they are ruled by their flesh. They are controlled by what is seen in the environment. They are being like, oh, this is what is happening on social media. This is what I, I saw today. This is what I noticed on Facebook or Instagram. And they are being controlled, and that is affecting how they behave and how they react. No, we are to be spiritual, to be in alignment. Jeremiah 29 says, for I know the thought that I have towards you. So we need to be spiritual for us to be able to connect to the Father, spirit to spirit connection. Deep calling on to deep and say, God, what is your plan and intention for my life? I know you have made me in your likeness for a purpose. Number three, number two, we must be excellent. We must be excellent. The book of Daniel chapter 6 and verse 3 says, for an excellent spirit was in him, and he was preferred above. It was not because yeah, they picked him, and the excellent spirit not came upon him. No. They said because that excellent spirit was on him, was, was found in him, then he was preferred. For us to become, for us to get to that place, for us to be who God has designed us to be, we can't just be a mediocre. No. Whatever our hands find to do, we must be committed and do it diligently. That's the only way God can be proud of us. That's the only way people around us can say, ah, this is a child of God. See, this thing is excellent. It's not expensive. It's not that, ah, no, I don't have money or so let me, no. No matter how little, it can still be excellent. It's a mindset. It's a mind thing. And there's, there's, there's one video that I, that I did that um, excellence can come inside. It's hard from a desire. Before it comes upon, then it now overflows into what you do. We must first desire to be excellent. Then it begins to play out with what we do and how we do our thing. Number three, we must be diligent. It is diligence that leads to palace. I see a man that is diligent. He will stand before king. It's not that he will get to the king's palace before he will not be diligent. No, it is that diligence that leads that person. So for us to be calm, who God has designed us to be, for us to live a life of, a, a life of purpose, a life of impact, we must be diligent. We need to look at ourselves. We still do assessment from the first half. From, from the first half, how diligent have I been? How many things have I come in contact with? How many things have I shared with my service? How many people have I reached out to? We must be determined. That's another point. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Having that consciousness will help our work and work with God. Not relying on our own strength that can fail. We must be determined that no, I'm the, it's either it is God or it is God. I have no other option. I have to stay put and stay connected. We must be disciplined. Proverbs 12, verse 1, the message translation if you love learning, you love discipline that goes with it. 
how short I so how short sighted to refuse correction. There are many people once they are corrected, they don't want to see that person anymore. They have to move away from the person. Who are you to be correcting me? We must be teachable. If we want to grow, if we want to become, if we want to touch life, if we want to make impact, we must be disciplined and be teachable. And lastly, we must be in a strategic relationship. It's a work with the white and you will be white. And the companions of fools, not that they will become fools, that they will be destroyed. If we know where we are going, we know those that will be in our vehicle. We know those that we're going to work with. I can't say I'm going to, um, um, I don't know, so <laughs> you want to be using some places in Portacourt, you know? But, you know, I think I want to go to GRA. And I'm, somebody now say, ah, but I want to get to Abacha Road. Can we go to Abacha Road? Oh, it's a waste of time. So we need to be intentional about relationships. Relationship is not what we just joke with. Relationship is not what we play with. Relationship is not a guesswork. I say, ah, and I like the way this person dresses. I like the way this person, this person speaks. So I think we can work together. We need to be intentional about our relationship, strategic relationship. And we trust God to guide us. So we can work with destiny helpers. So we can work with those that will help us. Those that will, those that will also confront and challenge us. Not those that will just keep you, okay, it's okay. If you are tired, they say, hey, okay, rest now. But we need some persons that even though you say you are tired, they say, no, you, the Lord is your strength. This is the assignment God has given you. You have to keep moving. We need those persons in our circle, in our, in our life, to be who God has designed us to be in order to become. Now we're moving to the doing. The quality of our doing depends on our being. If I'm determined, if I am diligent, if I am excellent, if I am spiritual, it's going to affect what I do. But if I am not being those words, what I'm doing is just going to be a waste of time. So what are the things to do? For me to have my desired outcome, the goal. When I'm being, I said, okay, I'm going to be spiritual. I'm going to be determined. I'm going to be diligent. I'm going to be mindful of my relationship. Then I have to identify certain knowledge gap and close it up. I have the idea of where God is taking me, where God is leading me. But how do I get there? You can see where I put it. I say, how do I move from where I am to where I ought to be, from point A to point B? I must identify, oh, okay, I lack discipline in this area. Oh, I eat too much. I sleep too much. Oh, I don't keep in touch. I, we, I identify certain things that we need to close it. Then we need to study. Those are doing. We study, make research. Okay, I want to know more about this. This is who God has called me. I'm a fashion designer. I'm a writer. I love to, you know, I love to do this. I love to do that. What resources can I gather together to improve my knowledge so I can be excellent? Oh, in my workplace, this is what I do. This is my JD. Let me just maintain and just stay there. No, how can I improve myself so that I can perform, even do more than what is required of me? Because as we said, we're not doing unto man, we are doing unto God. We read books, read articles, resources that could help, solving problems. Say, so it's not my business, but you have the solution. It's not by mistake that God has given you another wisdom to be able to answer some questions. Those are the doings that is leading to our becoming. We serve. I was sharing with someone that said, someone was like, ah, that, you know, in time past, people like to volunteer, people like to serve. Oh, yes, I'm, I'm available, let's do that. But what is, that? what is happening now? That people hardly want to serve, even those that are ready. You have genuine ones that want to serve, but compared to those that want to, uh, that, that are not ready to serve, even some that want to serve, they're like, what is the need for me? Not knowing that service promotes. There are many people that have connected to, to great people through volunteerism, through, through serving. 
Those are the doings that lead to our becoming. Oh, I know this person, she, she is into parenting. And I love also, I love to parent. I, I see myself, you know, in that, in that field. I see myself in that mountain. We'll see, I, I, I trust God to just help us to touch few things on mountain of influence. Okay, how do I serve this person? So I can learn from this person so I can grow. I love the passion this person has. I love what this person is doing. And I see myself in that line also. How can I participate? I cannot partake. How can I partner? The doing. After the doing, then go into having. And I put here, I said the link bridge between moving from A to B is lead measures. That is what are the things that I must do. Those are the doings. Then having, we can see these people, they have their certificate, they just graduated, which means they have done their being like, oh, no, I need to be, I need to be excellent, I need to be diligent, I need to face my studies. They did the doing, attending classes, researching, doing their exams. So you have done all that is expected and all that is required. You have passed all your exams and you have qualified to earn your certificate as a testament of a due process. Certificate is not just given to everybody. Certificate is awarded to those that followed through. Those that did the, all that is expected. All that was expected of them. Attending their classes, the attendance, their test, the assessment, the research work, whatever that is being given to them. And they're not saying, oh, we can see now have. <laughs> but you know one thing again, having is not becoming. My first and second degree on education, educational management, educational administration. So I am qualified to teach. But I'm not a teacher, no, but I have the certificate. Many people graduated as doctors, professionals, but they have the certificate. But the certificate, as in it, <laughs> has not automatically made them become what we studied or what they studied. Many of us have a certificate. I remember at times I would tell my husband, I say, oh, I love this course. I want to register for this course. I want to do that. He would tell me it's not about just registering for course. It's the application. And that's it. Many people want to do many programs, do online course because they just want the certificate. But having the certificate is not enough. We must be able to apply the knowledge that we have gained and practice then it's not leading to our becoming what we studied. So if I have my certificate and I said, okay, I'm going to school, I want to teach, then I'm not practicing, I'm not becoming a teacher, and I cannot tell people, okay, I'm a teacher. But now I cannot tell people, because if I tell people I'm a teacher, I say, oh, where do you teach? I say, I don't have a school. Uh, I have only certificate. They say, okay, no, no, no. I hope I'm, I'm making sense. I hope you're getting me, please. Let me get from your comment section. I think I'm just, everywhere is just quiet. I know we are all muted, but our uh, comment section can, uh, no sound, eh? I, can, I can't hear you. Oh my God. I hope I've not been. Please let me know. Is it from my, can everybody hear me? Yes, okay, thank you, Ma. Okay, okay, okay. We can hear you. We can hear you. All right. Okay, okay. Thank you, Ma. Yes, please. If you cannot hear me, just uh, maybe you log out and join in again. All right. I can thank hear you. So you. Okay. Thank you so much. All right. So I hope we are following what I'm saying. But having the certificate has not automatically made you what you studied. It is the practicing, which is now what we're looking at as the becoming. I'm wrapping up. We can now see these professionals. They are not even holding their certificate. They are now wearing that. Even before they tell you, you know what they represent. How like that those stars are that. When people see us, what are we representing? What can they see about us? What can they say about us? Becoming. Practicing what you read or study will lead to your becoming. See this scripture, John chapter 1 and verse 12. 
sorry, let me just correct this. But to all who did receive, receive, that is, you have it. But you know, before having, we talk about doing, being. So this scripture does cover it all for me. It says, but to all who did receive him, to those who believed, because until they believe, they cannot receive him if they have not believed him. We cannot receive Christ if we have not believed him. So this scripture is saying, but to all who did receive him, to those who believed that his being in his name, he gave the right to become. So we can see the due process. It's not just, the, oh, I want to become a lawyer. Uh-uh. There are steps, there are roadmaps to becoming. So when we talk about becoming, we need to first align ourselves to, okay, God, what is your plan and purpose for my life? And we become by making impact. Fulfillment does not come from having the certificate or having the award. But fulfillment comes when someone can look up to you and say, oh, Sister Funke, thank you. If not for you, I will not be a graduate today. So someone can go and say, oh, I want to thank God for using Sister Mercy to do this for me. Even if you are not there. Becoming is not all about having possessions or acquisitions. Oh, I have this, I have that. It's about impact. It's not, oh, I'm too old. I'm above 50. Can I see fulfill purpose? Ah, yes, ma, yes, sir. It's just for us to align and ask God, God, what is that purpose? It's not too late. Although there is an advantage if someone has started earlier, but it's never too late. Because if someone is still alive, it is, it is, it is, it is, it is an indication that there is a purpose. There is an assignment. There is an impact. It doesn't have to be, okay, I need an office. I need so much amount in my account to be able to make impact. It starts with alignment. God, show me. It might be just to make impact in one person's life. All because we are rising and say, okay, I know who God has called me to be. I know what God has called me to be. So this is just a call for us all. It's not for us to just be saying, okay, uh, this is how it is. Let me just leave it like that. No. We must live with a consciousness every time we open our eyes in the morning and wake up that God, you have an assignment for me. What is that assignment? And if we have identified God's assignment, if we have identified God's purpose for our life, every time we wake up, God, take me closer. What must I do to do more, to reach out more? Becoming is not what we desire, it's what we work towards. Most of us, we have our goals. Written new year, new resolution. I want to become an author. I want to become a teacher. I want to become this. I want to become that. Can we look at ourselves? Where, what, what have we done? What do we have? Who are we becoming? Are we becoming what we wrote down? We are still going to the assessment. When we become, it's not about what can I get again. It's what can I give. What, how can I impact the lives of the people around me? I pray that God will help us in the name of Jesus. This is the last slide for this. We still have a project. We still have assignment that we're going to do. There are some things I need to let me just show through the project, what we're going to do. We still have an assignment about the wig. What is your wig? We're going to look into that. Sister Messi, get ready. You're going to take over from now. What is your wig? We're going to look into that after Sister Mercy and then we look at the wigs as the goals. Then this is the assignment that we're going to have. We're going to look at some questions that will help us in becoming. 
then I'm going to share how I run my own day basically, and then also share a few tips, you know, for us to have a productive second half in 2023. I just trust God to help us in the name of Jesus Christ. So it is not enough for us to desire to have a goal. Okay, this is what I want to do. We must have the being. What are the things that I need to be? If you can go back to the question, I know we should be able to ask that now, what must I be? I must be spiritual. I must be diligent. I must be determined. I must be excellent in order for me to serve things. What are the things you want to do? So we must be able, if we can write this question and, and, and not fix it in the right words, what must I be? That we're, not, we're not going to write it in question format again. It's going to be, I must be this, 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 and this for me to do this, this, and this so I can have this and become this. I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing from now, for now. And then when it's time for the assignment, I'll come over again. Thank you, everyone. Mm -hmm. Sister Messi, where I thou? God Thank bless you. you. God bless you. <laughs> Amazing. Amen. In fact, I didn't want you to stop. I just wanted you to go on and on. There's so much to learn. There's just mm. so much to learn. If you feel that you know it all, there is more. There is mm. more from mm. where God kept them. You know, Amen. shortly we'll be going into the self-assessment. But let me just take one minute to explain to us what this self-assessment is all about. Sister Kemi have already said so much, but I want to just you know, emphasize on what it's, it will do for you and what the Bible says about it. Self-assessment refers to the process of reflecting on one's own thoughts, your feelings, actions, and overall performance. I don't know if you got that. Your overall performance in order to gain sight and evaluate oneself. It involves examining your personal strengths and weaknesses, identifying areas for improvement and setting goals for personal growth and development, just as she has already told us so much. You know, self-assessment plays a vital role in self-awareness, knowing who you are, so from time to time, if you do this assessment, it will expose your weaknesses and also help you identify your strengths so that you can do more and improve yourself. So scriptures, um, according to um, 2 Corinthians, I wanted to share from the Bible, 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, I'll take the NIV, it says, examine yourself to see whether you are in faith. Test yourselves. Do not... Real, uh, do you not realize that Christ is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. So uh, permit me to share my screen now so that we can go into the questions. I, I hope you're all ready. Yes, we, we are. Daughters. Yeah, so that we can go ahead and... Um... Yeah. Um, can you see my screen? Not yet. Not yet. Okay, okay, okay. Can yes, you see, can see it? it? Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. 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 okay. Um, I would like us to move on just a moment. Here on the screen, we have the first half of the year self assessment. So now it's all about God, about God. Please, I would like you to take down these questions as fast as you can so that you will answer them for yourself. We don't really require you to answer them right now, but you can still share with your mentors or the group admins. If you don't understand the questions, they will put you through because we'll still post these questions in the main, uh, in the CPP group. That's the Covenant Prayer Partners. So if you're not there, please prepare yourself to join us so that we can do so many things together. Then the first one is talking about God. What can you say about your relationship with God this past six months? That's the first question. What have you done with him? What can you say? Did you improve yourself with God? That's your relationship. What are the things that you put in place, you know, to improve your relationship with God? 
Then the second one says, have you learned or seen new things about God? So if you have, what are those things? If you have seen new things about God, what are those things? Then uh, the next one says, uh, what is the level of your fellowship with God? From one to 10, that's uh, 10 is the highest. Being that is the highest level of intimacy. What is the thing? What does the what's the level that you can rate yourself? Praise the Lord. Amen. Because of time, I'm going to move fast. I'm going to still post it in the main group. So, because of time, please permit me to move. Then the okay. second is a goal set for the year. Goal set for the year. How far have you gone this first half? Did you at all set any goal for yourself? How far, how far have you gone with those goals? Then identify the ones not achieved and why didn't you achieve them? This will help you know where to improve and what to do about them. Then identify the ones achieved. How were you able to achieve them? If you're able to identify all this, it will you know, help you to even do more so that you can get to that desired expectation, that desired goal that you want for yourself. So this will help you overcome some weaknesses in achieving the next set of goals. Can we move on, please? Can I move on? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. The third one is growth. Growth. Within this, the, the, uh, the first six months of this year, has anything be, been added to you? What are those things? Write them in your journal so that you will know the things that have been added to you. <clears throat> have you noticed any form of growth? And can people attest to, 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 to that? <clears throat> can people say, yes, she, she, she really you know, grew in the things of God or she really improved in her stance with God? What are the things? So you, you'll be able to list them out so that you know how to, if not, you know what to do. Write out the areas you have seen growth. Did you pay for any program for your personal growth and development? <laughs> I didn't know about all this, but thank God for the vision, yeah? I'm running after her. She showed me a lot of things. There's nothing that you pay for that you take for granted. Mm. At times you look out for those ones that, those programs that are free, they are also very educative. Then look out for the ones that you pay for yourself. It's all for your growth. You can write them down. And the impact of that program will help you so much. I'm moving. Then the third one, sorry, the fourth one, and uh, uh, though it's not the least, but that's the first one. The fourth one, I mean. Is about relationship. Did you connect with new people in the last six months? Friends, mentors, coaches, accountability partners, prayer partners, and leaders, which added value to you? If you did, just list them down. You will know whether you improved there or not, whether you met friends or you connected with mentors or coaches or prayer partners, and what have you been doing with your prayer partners? Or uh, whether <laughs> leaders who added value <laughs> with, uh, to you. Yeah, the next one is, uh, did you connect from unprofitable, disconnect. Disconnect, sorry, did you disconnect from unprofitable relationships such as added no value to, to you? That's such relationship that added no value to you. Did you disconnect? or you're still patching, or you're still managing. Mm. So list it out. It will help you know when to say no and when to continue. Can you identify fire lighters and fire extinguishers in your circle? Can you identify fire lighters and fire extinguishers in your circle as your friends? There are people that you would want to do things and you share with them, they will just quench that spirit. Mm. Are you still associating yourselves with them? Or are you associating yourself with 
the people that are there to push your vision up. Draw a table and write the names of the fire lighters for you and the fire extinguishers. Okay, okay, okay. I told you we are not going to waste time. There is so much to do tonight. I'm still going to share, <clears throat> share this in the group so that uh, we can move on tonight. Time is almost against us. Oh, God bless you. I will stop sharing my screen now. <laughs> Thank you so much. So answer those. You can connect with anybody that if you don't understand, they will explain to you so that um, you will understand more. God bless you. I'm still here. We are going to move on to the next uh, segment. The next segment is, um, I'm going to invite someone, someone special that is in our midst tonight. And this segment is um, about handling your finances better in the second half of 2023. I need to introduce our guest first. Her name is uh, Fumilayo Ebele. She's a skilled human resource generalist and social impact practitioner with over 10 years experience. I pull my heart for you, sis. With a master's degree in industrial and labor relation from Unila and dual first degree in, I'm taking my time to read it because she is amazing. Degrees in business administration. She is a certified trainer and a master card scholar, passionate about inclusive financial literacy and better life programs. She has trained over 700 individuals in sustainable financial lifestyle, including myself, business <laughs> management and self-improvement. Fumilayo is the founder of Kobo to Naira and serves as the president of Fight Against Poverty and Lack, MPCS Limited. Her goal is just to be a global social impact leader. Good to have you here, ma'am. I can go on and on and on talking about her tonight. But if yeah, you're in the house, please. She... Go Sister ahead and say hi to the house. Hello, sis. Are you here with us? Yes. Good evening, ma. Good evening. God bless you. God bless you, ma'am. <laughs> Thank God you. God bless for... you. Please. Can you just uh, continue from where I stopped? You're welcome. We really appreciate mm -hmm. your being here tonight. Once again, because she's always with us. God bless you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me once again. It's always a pleasure to come and share. And um, I hope this night is going to be another night of impact, of learning. I, I yeah. learned I have 15 minutes. I hope the 15 minutes will be enough. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so today so we want to look at how to manage our fund better in the second half of the year. It's been a very challenging year for us, especially in this country. We've gone through a series of um, challenges from one point to the other, but God has been faithful. He has brought us thus far, and uh, we are grateful for that. Please, um, I'm trying not to, I'm trying to manage my, um, what is it called? Data bandwidth so that if I put on my video, I don't know how it's going to be like, can be dragging. So I'm just trying as much as possible to, as I'm not putting on my video, but as soon as I see that the network is stable, I'll put on my video. Please, I need to share my screen. Am I permitted? Yes. Yes, you are. Please go ahead. Please. Go ahead. Okay. I am 
turn to I see the screen now. Yes, you can see the screen. Yes. Yes. Okay. 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 Okay, sir. Thank you so much, sir. So, how do we manage our finance, our funds during the and then we need to look at our finance and see what we can do. What we've been doing that is not working for us and what we can do now that we work for us. So, um, so achieving success in personal finance requires a long-term commitment and daily dedication. It's not just one-time effort. It's something that we constantly have to do. We just have to continue to do it every now and then. We need to review what we've planned for the year and what we can do to help us become better. Especially in this period that a lot has changed in the country, subsidy, fuel subsidy has been removed and it has really impacted the lot of things in the in the country we need to look at our finances again and we strategize what we planned for january might not be working for us again this june and you know by tomorrow we are entering july we are even hearing that fuel price per liter is going to 600 700 depending on the states that we are so we need to really look at, okay, what I planned out for the year as at December, January, I don't think is working again. Even during the period of cashless policy, I had to sit down and review all my plan again because you know it, it impacted a lot of things that I've planned out for the year. And when the cashless policy changed, I sat down again to look at you know, what I've planned for the year, what's my plan, you know, the plan we had for the family and everything, we had to look at it. So it's not just, oh, I, my goal is this one, I have planned it for the year, and that is it. No, it doesn't work that way. Budget change monthly, expenses often exceed expectations. You know, financial changes occur rapidly, like we are entering Jan July now, we don't even know you know, what, what we comfort. The other day I went to the market, I wanted to buy tomatoes and all that. I got there, I even saw the market women that sells the tomato and pepper in retail. They were all stranded. They were all standing like, if you see the small tomato they put down and the money they are calling. I was like, eh, I didn't buy one single, one single tomato, I didn't buy. I had to just leave the market. So a lot of things change and it requires us to be dedicated. You see this journey of personal finance, being financially free. It's a personal thing, that's why it is called personal finance. And it's something that we need to be dedicated, disciplined and determined to work it out for ourselves. We don't have excuse. There is no room for excuses because it's your own life, it's about your life, it's about your destiny, it's about the life of your family. Especially for those of us that are married, be you a husband or a wife, you have the life of people dependent on you, your children. So that is the reason I said you don't have excuse, you need to work it out for yourself. And guess what? Even with all the noise that is happening in the country, ah, things are hard, things are this, things are that. Do you know people are having their own breakthrough in this period? People are becoming, let me use that language, in their finances this period. Imagine the period of the cashless policy. Imagine the POS operators. 
Imagine a lot of them, how much they were able to make. Now, I'm not in support of how some of them went about the, taking advantage of the situation and all that. No, I'm not supporting that. But you will see some of them that genuinely did the business, they still made a lot of profit. People are still doing a lot in this period. That's why I said, you don't have an excuse. I pray God will open your eyes you will see opportunities even in the desert in the name of Jesus. Now, to ensure ongoing monitoring and assessment, it is essential to choose inspirational and motivating goals that act as your steadfast companion. You need to carefully select your goals and you know, this will help you maintain your motivation and commitment. What are your goals? At the beginning of this year, there were a lot of resolution, this, that. Did you have a goal? And if you, if you had a goal, what were those goals? Are they something that is really genuine and good enough to motivate you? Or have you even forgotten about your goal? You can't even remember the goal again. You didn't even write it down. You know, it has to be something that is you know, part of our daily routine. They should be incorporated into our daily routines. We need to check it every now and then. You can't be on this journey of personal finance. You can't know how to manage your fund if you don't incorporate how you spend your money into your daily routines. Because it's little, little things that matters. Before you know it, everything has finished. Today is 30th of June. Some people collected their um, salary last week, um, some this week, within this period anyway. Now, if you ask, how did you spend your salary? Now, um, I'm not looking at the situation in the country, right? If we want to look at it, if we want to sit down and start analyzing, everybody will have reason why they don't have money again. But if you ask, people, how did you spend your salary? I'm sure some people cannot even write down how the money went. They just know that everything has finished. And today it starts yet. And this is not about my income is too small. My salary is too small. It is not. It is about discipline. It is about consistency. It is about looking at the future and making plan for your future. So it's not about the money is too small. Yes, I'm not disputing that, that the money is not small. You see, no matter how much we are earning in this country, um, you know, how much our monthly income is, either we are, a, we are an employee or we have our own business, no matter how much we are earning, we will always have reason why that money is not enough. We will always have reason the money is not enough for us. If you are earning 20 million and somebody that is earning 50,000, at the end of the month or at the end of the day, you will, it will look as if the two of you, you finish the money at the same time. Because you know, as income increases, there's something that is called lifestyle, lifestyle inflation, lifestyle inflation. So, you know, as your income increases, your lifestyle also increases. You want to change your car, you want to change your wardrobe, you want to do a lot of things. So, you know, that's why I said it's involved discipline, consistency, and looking ahead. Uh, uh, looking ahead and planning for your future. So what can we do? You know, we need to understand our needs and our wants. There is no how we can manage our funds if we don't know the difference between needs and wants. A lot of us focus on our wants. We don't focus on the need. So we need to really understand what is a need, what is a want. A want is desire for goods, services, feelings, and other things we would like to have but do not need. I want to... I want to do this, I want to do that, but do I really need it? If I don't do that thing, will I die? What is the consequences of not doing that thing? You know, if we ask ourselves those simple questions, why needs are things we must have to survive? 
we must eat, we must drink water, we must stay in, you know, in an apartment, have a covering over our head, have clothes you know, to put on, those are needs. But at the same time, if you analyze your need, is this something that is, that, you know, it's um, like if we are talking about you must eat now, fine, you must eat, but we are not saying you, sh you should eat expensive food that is beyond your power. Let me use that language. I want to eat, I can cook at home. And even when I want to cook at home, I can cook something that will not cost me so much. But you see some people, they want to eat. If you look at the food, at when they, by the time they set the food on the table, either they cook it at home or they go out to go and buy, you will wonder, that, uh, where is this food going into? You will see the amount of meat and everything they will put inside that food. It is good, though I'm not disputing that. But the question is, that food, is this something that, you know, your income is enough, can cover it in a sustainable way? Or you just want to eat and just for, you know, continue to eat like that? Um, let's look at the four big expenses. For us to know how to manage our fund, we need to understand where our money is going to. If we look at everything at the end of the day, the four big expenses where our money disappear, uh, housing, feeding, transportation, education, or child care. You know, housing. How much are you paying for your house rent? You need to review it. You need to review it. If you are spending more than one third of your income, either annual yearly income or monthly income now, whichever way you want to break it that you will understand. If you are spending it, then you know, you might be in financial body every now and then to pay that house rent. You might be in financial body. So what one third, you know, one over three times, how much you are paying, you will get the figure. You might be in financial body. You can adjust it and seek other ways for, for depending on where you are living. I understand, you know, living in Lagos, Port Harcourt, Abuja, housing is expensive. It's expensive, but there are ways you can adjust it. So if you spend more in your housing, like maybe you spend close to 50% of your income or something concerning um, to pay for your house rent. That means you, have, you need to adjust in some other area to cover up for that um, addition that you've added to your house rent. But if you are living in a place and you know you can get something very good that will not impact your health, will not impact your mental health, will not impact your outlook in, you know, about life, then why don't you go for it? I, un I understand that you know, the neighborhood we stay, the environment and everything can impact our life, can impact the life of our children. I understand that. But at the same time, you know, all these things are in stages. We can start from somewhere and aim to be somewhere, aim to be at a better place. So we don't have to try to say, oh, I must live in this particular estate. This one, the big people are living there. When you live there, you will be motivated to become who you want to become. This one, that one, you know, those are the excuses some people give, fine, which is fine. But at the same time, your motivation should come internally. You should be motivated to become who you want to become, who God wants you to become internally, not until somebody push you or you are living in a particular environment. If you are living there, you are not motivated internally, you will do it, you will try to become like them for a while, then after you will give up. In short, you might be frustrated and depressed. But if you start your journey one step at a time, one step at a time, you will be able to get to that level at one point, even if not at that point, at that particular level you are aiming at. But you will know that you are following a process rather than trying to jump and finding yourself in financial pressure every now and then. 
feeding. The quickest way to finish your income is by eating house. Some people cannot control themselves when it comes to food. They can, they can consume anything. They will even look at the cost, at what cost the thing is coming. Why don't you change? You need to manage your fund. Some people, they don't buy clothes. They are not the type that are into clothing, fashion, and all that. But you see this food there. Eh? Hey, as they are eating this, they are eating that. As they are jumping from this, they are eating that one. And at the end of the month, if you put pen and paper together, you will, you will be amazed at how much you spend eating. And guess what? Most of these things that you know we spend our money on to eat, to buy, drink, and all that, they are not even healthy choices for us. They are not healthy. So why don't you go healthy, eat something that is healthy, cook at home, eat something that is healthy, and also save your money at the same time. And guess what? If you eat healthy now, it's an investment for you because you don't want to grow, save money, build your wealth, and you get to a point in life that you're supposed to be enjoying all this investment you've built over the years, and God forbid, one sickness will surface. And you will, and the person will discover that all the money you've built, all the wealth you've built, all the up and down you've done in the past years, now you are spending it on a sickness. And you know what? Some sicknesses and diseases are like pouring money, uh, water into a basket. You can't even count how much. You can't give account of how much you, you know the person is spending. So why don't we continue? Why don't we start to eat healthy? Eat something refreshing, something healthy, and save our money so that you know that money will continue to grow and we'll be able to build wealth. And at later days in life, we won't have to be spending that money on sicknesses and diseases. We'll be able to use it to impact our life, impact the life of people. Now, transportation. We are in the era of subsidy remover. A lot of, the other day, you know, I was so annoyed with myself. I took um, all this, a rider, I don't want to mention the name. The, you know, it wasn't up to 30 minutes journey. It wasn't up to 30 minutes journey. And if you see the bill, the, at the end of the day, the money that I, I paid, I was just like, God, what is this? So transportation too is huge on horse. Those of us that have car, you know, if you have a car, some people now have started doing pool, um, what is it called? Pool riding. They pick, they tell themselves, this week you, you will use your car, we'll follow you, next week I will use my car. Or some people do, okay, we go together, you give me any amount, we use it to buy food. Instead of trying to do, is my car, I'm in charge and trying to drive alone and all that, they look for ways to incorporate all these things so that they can save money to be able to buy food. So it's not necessarily that you carry your car every day. If it's not something that is generating income for you, some days you might need to use the public uh, bus. That does not mean that you are poor. That does not mean that you are lowering your standard of living. You are just looking for how you will cope with in this period. You are looking for your coping mechanism in this period. And if you want to buy a car, just don't go and buy a car that's you no know, fancy car so that they will know you've arrived. Buy a good, for efficient car, fit for the minimum good road. You know our road, how it is. You know, buy a minimum car that will be good, for efficient, you can easily buy the parts. Mechanic will not be telling you lies, life now and then concerning any parts and all that. Now, education and child care, please, I'm begging us. This period is not the period to try to spend money anyhow. We are trusting God for a better economy in the country. But whatever we can do to give ourselves peace of mind, you know, to, to make us sleep well, let's do it. Take time to look for good school. September is coming. The children will soon go on vacation in August. If you know your children's school fees is giving you a dick every now and then, 
and you can't afford it any longer. Instead of you trying to force yourself, you can look for a good school with affordable payments. Some people are doing class to put children in school because my friend's children are there because in the neighborhood, this is the best school because, because my colleagues' um, children are there. But you know the pain you go through. You know the sleep, sleepless nights you go through before you can pay those school fees. I don't think that is an healthy choice. I don't think it is good for your finance. Please, you can look for affordable, affordable schools for your children. Plan for your children's education. Start planning for their university. Start putting money aside. In an insurance, different insurance company have education plan. As minimum as, as 5,000 5, every month, you can be doing this and be keeping it for them. And those plans come with scholarship cover. We don't pay anything happen to you. But if anything happens, you know, they come with scholarship cover. And guess what? At any point you've built that fund and you need part of the money, you can go to meet them. You can go and meet them. They will give you part of the money. Like, oh, the children have entered secondary school. You need to make some payments. They can give you part. Please shop around for insurance company. I'm telling you, it's a very good plan that you can have for your children. Even if it's 5,000, 10,000, you know, monthly, quarterly, half yearly, or yearly that you can put aside for their education. You know, you need to plan for your children's education so that the burden will not be too much on you when it's time for a future payment like university. Get a good health care plan for the family. So these are ways of managing your funds. We don't pray that we should fall sick. We don't pray, we pray against it. But at the same time, there are some things that we need to be wise, you know, we need to do. Like in Lagos State now, Lagos State now have a health plan for Lagosians, people staying in Lagos. You can take for individual, I think the minimum plan for individual is 8,500 for a year. 8,500 cover even up to antenatal care. Imagine paying 8,500 know, for the year to cover some basic things like malaria, typhoid, and natal care, um, laboratory tests, and some things like that. You can take for the family. I think the family cover is, is below 50,000 for a family of four or something. These are plans you need to put in place wherever you are. There are other HMO you know, that also have all these plans. I don't want to mention them so that it will look as if I'm doing that fast. You can do this plan for your children, for your family, especially if you are still giving birth, you, are, you know, you, still, you are still putting to pay, you are pregnant and all that. All this plan will help you save money when it's time to pay bills. Imagine paying like 50,000 for a family of four, you know, for the year. And it also covers antenatal care. In individual financial situation differs. So if, if you don't spend much on partying, entertainment, or transportation, you may have more room in your budget for housing and vice versa. I need to emphasize that. Now, other things we can do, if we, now, if we know our expenses and we know how we can go about you know, managing those expenses, we need to name our goal. I've mentioned it before. If you set a goal for the year, oh, I have a savings goal, I have an investment goal, you will be able to meet it faster because each time you sit down, you look at it, how far am I going? You will be able to adjust where you are making mistakes or where you are getting, uh, where you are not meeting it, to be able to adjust to meet those goals. Have a budget. Every now and then I talk about budget, 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 but we need to have budgets. We need to have plan for the money. If you don't have plan for your money, other things will help you build the plan and they will take it away. If you don't have plan for your money, you know, there's societal pressure, there's family pressure, there's all sorts of pressure, all sorts of things are waiting, expenses. They used to say, hey, there's this plan, expenses not the finished. They will come and take the money away. But if you have plans, you know, before your salary comes, you know this is where your money is going to. I need to put money aside for this, do this one, do this one. If any other thing comes, you just like, I'm sorry, it's not in my budget. Money has finished. Because probably the money that is left for you is your um, transportation, 
um, upkeep for the month and all that? Will you use it to do things that you didn't plan for? So please, and when I say be a bone, you need to budget to the to everything to grant zero of the money that you have. You need to budget that money. Automate your savings, have a separate account, set up a regular transfer. If you know you, you can't be disciplined enough to, um, to transfer money for your savings and investments, you might need to look at automation. Like, you know, this, um, like the piggy vest we use for savings challenge. We, I, I run this service challenge. Some people automate their savings. So automatically the thing just removed from their accounts. We can have separate accounts to manage several things. Like um, when money comes, we just put the money into different um, cards. Like for those of us that use our card for shopping, you know the money in that account is for shopping. And when the money finish, it has finished. And if you go shopping and you go beyond your distance, you know at the end of the, you, you can't get money for any other thing, okay? Find the best place for your savings. In as much as I encourage savings, I know saving, you know, is just a baby step. People will be able to accumulate money together for investment opportunities. But that money must not stay idle. You need to find the best place for them. You need to find where you will get good interest. And when I say good interest, I'm not saying that put it in a place that they will say bring 10,000 naira, you will get 20,000 in seven days. No. You need to you know, apply wisdom where you put your money. And please, in this period that we are in, a lot of scams, a lot of things are going on. Be careful. Don't allow anybody entice you into, give me, bring your money, you will get so, so, so at the end of the year. Please, sometimes some of these um, scams, even the person telling you to bring your money, don't even understand what they are telling you. It's what somebody told them that they, they too, they've come to tell you. And before you know, in this era of technology, a lot of things we have, you know, can happen that you won't even be able to trace anybody. You won't trace where the money is going to. Even if you go to EFCC to report, they might, they might not be able to do anything about it. Even if they try to take some step, you know, at the end of the day, it might be a wasted effort. So please, let's be very careful where we put our money. Let's be wise, make wise decisions with our money. Now, part of managing your fund is growing your investment. Grow your investment rather than saving, um, than savings accounts. I encourage savings, but I don't encourage people to leave their money there for long. That's why I, you know, I used to run it like 100 days and all that, so that people can be able to build up funds for, for investment. You know, savings account interest is very, very low. So try to focus on investing, diversifying your portfolio, there's stocks, there's mutual fund. You know, some people will say stock is very low, there's no money in stock again. I'm telling you there is still money. It depends on the stock you are looking at. It depends on, you know, uh, what you are looking at. But there's stock, there's still money. There is foreign stocks you can invest your money in. There is the local Nigerian stock you can invest your money in. There's real estate. Some people will say they don't know where to put their money, that uh, stock doesn't work and everything. If you feel stock doesn't work, why don't you put your money into landed properties? Legal landed properties. Don't go and buy land where your money will come tomorrow and take it and say it's not for you, it's for somebody else. So if you don't know, if you, if you are not comfortable with stock, you are not comfortable with the um, capital market and all those things, shares and stock, why don't you try to understand and gather information concerning buying lands, concerning putting money in real estate? A lot of people are making money in it. So at least that one is also very um, good and it's also help us to fight against inflation. The rate at which real estate is going, landed property, it's, it beats inflation. It, the present inflation rate in Nigeria is about 22 point something, according to CBN, almost 23%. So that means that the income, you know, your investment, if your investment is below 
your investment return is below that amount. That means your money is not really doing well because inflation is eating your money. But you have to be careful too where you put those money. Even if you see somewhere that they promise you 30% per year, you have to be careful. You need to double check, do your due diligence before you put your money. So there are different ways that you can put your money. There are different investment strategies that you can do that at the end of the year, by the time you put everything together, you add it up, you do an average, you'll be able to also beat that inflation. At the end of the year, looking at your whole investment portfolio, you might even be getting at 30% um, return and all that. Do you understand? So please, let's be careful. Let's increase our income. This period, in short, just a source of income, just one source of income is not enough again. Is not enough again. Please, I'm begging us. Try and look at all that things you can do to make money. All that legal things. All that legal things you can do to make money. God has given us talent. God has given us seed. We are not sowing it. We are not, we are not trying to speak. We are not trying to see what we can do with those talents. Some of us don't know that we, we are gold, but the worries of this life, a lot of uh, things we carry around, worry, concerns, and all that has covered that gold that we ourselves are not even seeing the gold, let alone outsiders we see the gold. You are not becoming who you are supposed to be, who God has destined you to be. List, you know, there are, there are processes, there are things you can do that will help you to see things you can do that will help you make money. Sometime ago, I, I did an analysis of this thing in one of, in a story um, they invited me. You, you know, you need to really look at all these things. Now, you need to change your spending habits, please. Change your spending habits. Look for cheaper alternatives. There are always alternatives to whatever we want to buy. Look for cheaper alternatives. You can look for ways to save money on items that are more impacted by inflation. I've already mentioned transportation and all that. Buy in bulk. You know, for now, again, they said electricity, they want to increase the tariff if they've not even increased it. All those things that we do to burn card and all that, start looking at how you can adjust it, change your bulb, change some things in the house that eat a lot of um, electricity, talk to the children, let them know that they shouldn't do this and do that and all that. Build a rainy day fund. You need to build an emergency fund and to have three to six months living expenses. Living expenses is like, you know, the money you spend every month to take care of yourself and your family. So have that money saved somewhere that can cover three to six months expenses in case of anything, in case something happen, at least it will be like a shock absorber for you, you know? So please, let's, let's follow these simple tips. There are things we can practice every day. I know it is not easy, but if we work at it, if we discipline ourselves, we can always become um, who God wants us to become. In conclusion, dream big, like the good things of life, but learn to discipline yourself. Know your limits. Some of us don't know our limits. Your friends are doing this. You too, you want to do it. This is what is raining on social media. This you too, you want to do it. Even the house of God has become a place of pressure for some people. Sister, so, so, so dressed like this. So you too, you want to dress like that. You want to go and buy clothes you know, on credit. They are doing as you are being in church. You too, you want to do. Please know your limits, eh? Know your limits. Wherever you may be, whatever lifestyle you have, whatever you do, there will always be a way to do it for less. Whatever that we steal from your future, run away from it. Let your goal be to make money that will make you live in total well-being, physically and spiritually. May God bless us all in Jesus' name. Sister Mercy, thank you so much, I'm true. <laughs> God bless you. I, I told you when I started introducing her that if I leave her alone, she will talk to you tomorrow. God bless you so much, Sister Fumi Layo, for this uh, uh, insightful teaching this evening. You have taught us so much. You have taught us how to cut our coat according to our pockets. Not uh, <laughs> not our size anymore. 
God bless you so much, ma. Um, for time's sake, um, I don't I don't think we'll be able to take uh, questions for her. If you have any question, please um, send it in. Or if you want to talk to her personally, you can contact any of us who shall um, connect you to her. God bless you. God bless you again, um, Sister Fumi, for this uh, wonderful exposition. God bless you. Um, now, we still have so much to do. But I don't know how we are going to manage time. Um, Sister Kemi, please, um, whatsoever you can do to manage time for us, please um, go, uh, go ahead. She will talk to us about um, the, the 90 days project. You have up to 10 minutes, but I don't think that, I mean, I don't know how you're going to do it, but please go ahead and let's uh, manage time. God bless you, sis. Amen. Okay, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to make it so brief because our time is fast paced and we still have to pray and make some declarations into the new year. Um okay, let me quickly go. We have talked about the being, the doing, the having and becoming. So I said, What is your wig? Wig is widely important goal. It's not woman hair. There is wig and there is wig. Eh? This is the week we should focus on not bone straight or straight bone. All those things are good. Those sister Fumi has taught us how to, you know, manage our funds well. So there is week and we have week. So this week we are talking about widely important goals. So we have this project that will be for 90 days. We are not doing it together. Although we have an accountability group, I will share the link for anyone interested. So it's for us to, okay, this is my goal for this second is not even second half now because it's going to be within three months so it's the third quarter like okay i want to make sure there are some people that say they want to write a book and they are yet to complete the book okay this even in this 90 days i want to complete my book in this 90 days i want to learn and complete my sewing in this 90 days i want to learn how to make bags how to make wigs how to do this how to do that in these 90 days, I want to build intimacy with God. You know, you have your goal. So that is, the, that is your own widely important goal. So how it works is you can have so many goals, which is better if we can be writing it out. You can write them down, the goals that you want to see yourself becoming by the end of 2023. Okay, by the end of 2023, I want to be an author. I want to have written like three books. I want to be, you know, to have released an album. I want to have done this. I want to have done that. So those are the important goals. But out of those important goals, then take us three maximum, or if it's going to be one that you're going to focus on, that is the widely important goal. That is your wig that we must wear every day. So if it's one, then it is widely important goal. But if you have more than one, but it should not be more than three. That will be the widely important goal. So widely important goals are few highly important goals that must be achieved or no other goal matters. Uh, hey, I want to lose weight it may not be your important goal. It may be to write a book. Writing a book may not be your important goal. It may be to shed weight because of health issues. So we need to identify what is that important goal. So your widely goals, right up to three, no more than three, which is going to be for the next 90 days. And how we're going to do it is to block 60 to 90 minutes. Although they advise 90, 90, that is for 90 days, block your first 90 minutes. That is when you wake up, your one and a half hours, first one is dedicated to that important goal. So I just like to put it 60 to 90 minutes because some of us may have other things to attend to, but just that in a day, we must make sure we spend 90 minutes, that is one and a half hour over that important goal that we have identified. And we must be, which means if we do this thing consistently, some of us may have this goal achieved even before the 90 days expire. It took Nehemiah and others to build the temple, I mean, to rebuild the city in 52 days. So 90 days, it's, it's, it's enough for us. And in this room, I'm going to share some articles and some things that we have to do and work towards that can help us 
There's going to be a daily accountability process. You have to give us a report of what was done for these 90 days. So we're not going to joke about it at all. And we trust God that you are, you are going to use church mind. You're not going to tell us what we cannot say. Because we can deceive others. You cannot deceive yourself. So this thing is not about me. It's not about Sister Mercy. It's about individuals. So when we have these important goals, when we have these our wigs, the things that we need to look into that will help us, limitations to my wig. For example, if I want to lose weight, we have to be, you know, our goals also need to be smart. And I know most of us, we know what we mean it was to be specific, you know, measurable, achievable, and time-bound, reliable, so realistic. So what are the limitations? If, for instance, I want to lose weight, what are the limitations? Why am I, what, what, what uh, okay, maybe I don't have a gym where, I don't have a gym around me, I don't have, you know, certain things that is causing limitations for me not to be able to achieve this thing. So how do I overcome these limitations? Okay, maybe I need to find a gym around me. I need to go and get sports where I need to know and discipline myself, maybe to wake up early, you know? So what do I want to carry? Why do I want to this? When do I want to carry this out? That is talking about the time. So if it's in the morning or in the afternoon or in the evening, we must be able to identify because this is what builds capacity. This is what builds habits. I was listening to Apostle, uh, Apostle Selma. He said, it's not about you just praying randomly or what's it called. He said, but if you want to have an effective prayer life, have the time and be committed to it. Okay, every 12 midnight, I want to wake up and pray. And over time, you build it. Like, I, 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 okay, I'm, I'm not sure I shared it here. I wake up a few minutes to four so that I can have, okay, I'm going to share it when I'm talking about my, what's it called, how I run my day. So at times, people, okay, let me get it. When I get there, I will talk about it. So you must fix your time. I want to go to the gym. What time am I going to eat? And let it, you know, even if it's going to be, if it's going, if it's going to, if I'm going to tamper with it at all, it's going to be maybe one out of ten. Then lastly, how do I reward myself if I achieve this thing? How do I, because it's always good you reward yourself that for a, a, a good job that you have done, but you don't reward yourself more than what you have done. I think I have something that, that we share in that, uh, in that light. Okay, so how I run my day, basically, there's this uh, quote by Jim Ron. Either, it is either you run your day or the day runs you. It is that in the people that run their day, they have their to-do list, which is one of the things I'm going to share on the, the what's it called? The quick tip. But you, the people that run, the, that the day runs them, they're the ones that they wake up, no uh, agenda for the day is where, where I find myself. Okay, I'm going to this place. Okay, this is where I'm going next. Sister, make sure you at home. I'm coming to visit you. Um, sister, this, I'm passing through your house. Are you around? Let me just see your face. You know, they are the ones that the day is running, the, the, running them. And my time you look at it, it's already time. I, I have to go to church. Oh, I have to go and pick my daughter. Oh, I have to do this. I have to do that. But there are some, which I believe is everyone on this call, that we are determined in our being that we are going to run our day. So basically, I have my daily routine. I wake up like 3.50, 10 minutes to 4. At times, I don't even set alarm anymore. I just see myself open my eyes. I just open my eyes and say, Holy Spirit. You know, like the thing has now become, uh, at, at times, even if I forget to set the alarm, I will just open my time around that time, few minutes to four, because I always have my Bible study around four, between four and five. So after that, um, it's either I read or do something between that five to 5.30. By 5.30, I start the school room. I have to wake up the children, get them dressed up, you know, get ready for school. They go drop off. Then I go after, once I drop them off, I go to the gym right from there. Before going to school, I have already dressed up wearing my gym wear. So from there, after dropping them, from there I go to my gym, which I put 30 minutes. Although on the treadmill, I use like 20 minutes. So if I want to lift anything or I want to do anything, but I just put myself within that time that, okay, 30 minutes, then come back, clean up do all those all the things i need to do you know arrange everything and make sure i finish basing by night even while i'm basing while i'm doing other things that i'm listening to a sermon or i'm praying in tongues there is no there you know you're just occupying everywhere 
get it everywhere busy. And also, so between that 9 and 12, fixing appointment, reading a book, doing my online course. I have so many online courses. I just have to, you know, like, okay, the next 30 minutes, the next 11, one hour, I want to do this. I want to read. If there's any appointment, if there's any meeting, any assignment, the communities I have, I have few communities that, okay, I have to follow up on what is going on there. I engage that. Then I also have a midday, a midday prayer by 12. You know, praying for souls or just speaking in tongues. Then if I have to reply, go to social media. My social media is control. Is control. Is early in the morning, maybe I have to make a post like this. Uh, this month, I was assigned to do a daily post on prayer from. So every morning, once I post on the WhatsApp, I go to other social media platforms to make sure I post it. And I leave it there. Then if I want to check, maybe there's any comments and all that. Because if this social media, if it's not well controlled, it's going to ruin our day. Then school runs, then come back, and then it all depends on what else. So basically, this is how I do my own. So let me quickly share the quick tip for us to be more, for us to have a more productive second half. Number one, we have to be intentional about you. We have to leave the comfort zone. Nothing grows in the comfort zone. Nothing grows in the comfort zone. So for a more productive second half, we must embrace some forms of discomfort. Waking up early, you know, like. Don't say God forbid, you know, when you say uh, form of, forms of discomfort. No, you know, we have to just like, I'm going to stretch myself. If it's for me to wake up early, for me to be able to achieve the things I need to achieve, you understand? So we need to be intentional that, no, I've looked at myself. We can go through that question that is a messy act about the assessment for the first half. And see, okay, I was able to achieve this thing because I did this. I was unable to achieve this because of this. So I have to be intentional about myself so the second one is before you go to bed every night always guys what you need to do the next day it works for me and it's not that i write them every night at times i'm tired i just sleep off but the times i took my time i said okay tomorrow is wednesday what 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 time am i going to wake up what am i going to do this it worked for me it helped me to plan my day Although there are some things that may come up and that is not in what you have planned, but you are able to maneuver and still ensure that the things that need to be done are rightly done. Number, what's it called? The next one is number three, is know your needs that leads to your week. We all know our week. Our week is one important goal. But you must know your most important task. Your most important task is that lead measure that takes you to your week. So when we're saying your week that you are, you are to devote 60 to 90, 90 minutes daily in those 90 days. So the MIT is the most important task that is leading to this one well important goal. So number what's it called? Be focused. Be focused. You can block 30 minutes, one hour. Deal with distraction. I can deceive myself, but I cannot, I mean, I can deceive others. But I cannot de deceive myself. Don't multitask. Don't multitask. Don't read at the same time. I said, okay, you are reading. I want to reply messages. I've seen this. I'm actually calling me. I have to pick this call. I have to go and attend to this. It's good to do one thing at a time. Because, you know, multitasking is about switching tasks. And then if I'm replying, if I'm reading, and then I have now said, okay, there is a notification here. Let me go and read it. By the time I read and I'm now replying, for me to get back to the book I'm reading, they said it's going to take like 80 minutes or what, 8 minutes thereabouts. For me to be able to get that focus or concentration back into what I was doing before. So switching tasks is not effective. It's just for you to do one task at a time. Self-discipline, don't reward yourself more than your work. Don't say, oh, at, at least, okay, they say we should reward ourselves. I've been able to read for 30 minutes so I can watch movie for two hours or I can be on social media for two hours. Uh -uh. Don't give yourself reward more than your work. So, also, I'm just trying to run this off. Be focused, self-discipline, have a growth mindset. I can be better. It is good to celebrate yourself when you have done well. It's simply showing you that there is a capacity for you to do more. So don't let complacency set in. Know when to say no and when to say yes. Know when to say no and when to say yes. We have so many motivational speakers like, okay, always say no, always say no. But there are certain things, you know, that the Holy Spirit will just, that's why we need to be spiritual. Remember our being, we need to be spiritual. It's not about say no, 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 no. But there are some things that the Holy Spirit will allow you to say yes. Because you want it to be part of it, so as to learn certain things, or maybe to correct something that is not in others. 
So we must be sensitive to know when to say no and when to say yes, especially when it is in line with God's plan and purpose for us. We must be able to say yes. And when this thing is, you know, is not called if it's not working, so there is no point saying yes to it. I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Learn self-management, the ability to regulate your behavior, thoughts, and emotions in a more productive way. When you go to the airport, you're in the traffic and you're not the one driving, it's not the time to check social media. I'm always, I have um, I book on my phone. Is that, that when I'm not driving, I'm reading my book or I'm replying to something that is so important. Maybe at the airport, they said, okay, they have delayed the flight again. Always go with a no, a, a book. You know, don't just go to the airport and say you are traveling, you just want to see that the airport, maybe you are with a notebook and then once there is a delay or there is time to just read, let's just you know, that is self-management because until we are able to manage ourselves, we cannot manage our time. If we cannot manage ourselves effectively, we will not be able to manage our time. And lastly, never forget John 15, 5, which is my favorite scripture. It's about abiding. And it says, for without me, you can do nothing. No matter how important these are our goals, no matter import how important our task, no matter how we desire to become. We cannot become outside of God. We cannot become outside of God. And I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. So let me just go back. I've shared it. That is our assignment. I'm going to post the um the what's it called? The link for us. Anyone that is interested in joining the I'm looking for it. Did I put it here? Okay. Maybe in the next 90 days you want to develop intimacy with God. You want to write a book, you want to read five books. You want to lose 20 kg, you want to launch a product, you want to start a business, you want to complete a course, you want to learn something that you are ready to be committed to in the next 90 days. In the next 90 days. So we're going to, I'm going to share, um, just watch it, watch the group. I'm going to find a way to get it across to us. Then we're going to hold ourselves responsible, which means this journey starts tomorrow. This journey starts tomorrow, and I pray God help us and bless us in Jesus' name. Thank you, sir, and thank you, mom. Wow, wow, wow. Sister Kemi, thank you so much. I know a lot of people here want to ask you so many questions, even for Sister Kemi. I'm so sorry there's no time. We still have so many things to do, and we are trying to cut down so that um, we all can go and rest. Um, um, I would like to say to you, if you have any question for either Sister Kemi or um, Sister Fumi, please, you can just send your, uh, your questions uh, uh, across to us so that they will answer you effectively. And um, before we go on, I would like you to, you know, share this message with others and please like us on facebook on uh, on our instagram and um even uh, the, the youtube if you want a repeat of all this you can still get them on youtube okay so you don't need to rush yourself please um we need to go over to the next um next thing on our agenda tonight we are going to skip the testimony part I know that is very important so that we can encourage someone. But um, tonight, I think we should just um, take uh, the, the personal supplication and then um, Pastor Prince in the house will take it and also the personal praise. Please, Pastor, can you just help us unmute and continue from where I stopped? God bless you, sir. Hello, sir, are you still with us? Hello, Hello Pastor. can you hear me? Yes. God bless you. Yeah, Can you hear me? Project your, your voice, please. God bless you. Can you, you hear sir. me? I'm, I'm projecting. Yes, already. sir. Can yes, sir. Me? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I let me just share my screen. I don't know if you can see it. Can we see the screen? Yes, we can. Okay. Can, sir. Hallelujah. Uh, quickly, we go into personal supplication. Uh, in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, he said, don't be pulled in different directions or worried about a thing. Be saturated in prayer throughout each day 
offering your faith-filled request before God with overflowing gratitude. Tell him every detail of your life. And so we are going to go into personal supplication and that is what we're praying, whatever we think or whatever we want to ask God is open to all. We have had a lot of things tonight. We've heard about um, uh, what to get into. In fact, so many things that um, we've discussed tonight pertaining to us. So I want us to begin to channel it to prayer, but we need to be specific in our prayer. We need to be specific in our prayer because um, God answers only by specifics. Um, look at I look at this word in the book of First Corinthians chapter 14, 8 to 11. It says, For if the trumpet give an uncertain sound, who shall prepare himself to the battle? Verse 9 says, So likewise he, except ye utter by the tongue words easy to be understood, how shall it be known what is spoken? For ye shall speak into the air. There are, it may be, so many kinds of words, of voices in world, and none of them is without um, signification. Therefore, if I know not the meaning of the voice, I shall be unto him that speaketh a barbarian. And that, and he that speaketh shall be a barbarian unto me. And so um, speaking to God without being specific on what you are saying does not really make sense to him. It's like making a noise and God does not listen to noise. God listens to voice. God hears voice and not noise. And so let's tonight come to him in any language, but let's be specific in what we are asking. So in the next few minutes, we will be praying in the name of Jesus. So please let's raise our voice as we pray in the name of Jesus. Talk to God. Malike Shundra, Magalabu, Kerakian, Nikan, Mama Hayekatusha, Paria Dive, Libra Gala, Bredo Supra, Tagale, Pupa. We can unmute ourselves and pray alone. Yes, we can unmute ourselves. We can unmute ourselves and pray. We don't need to hear what you say, but we are already in the presence of God. 
you can ask God, ask him in specific, the great, what Lord, I need the great, the Kukababa, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is You can ask, I am the Papa. How are you? in the next five minutes we'll be praying again at times we uh for those of us that understand what mr kemi was saying in the last uh, session that she had you might wake up early and because you did not plan your day you end up wasting the time you end up not achieving what you set out to do maybe you woke up by four you want to read and you start by touching your phone before you know it one thing lead to one social media and the other mm. at the end of the day it's time for your school run and from there the day is gone and when you come back you discover you didn't achieve anything so we are going to ask god for grace because some people it's not really it's not really by virtue of uh power you know you have tried to do it and you can't stop it and all that so we're going to ask god for that grace father every bad uh, pattern every bad pattern that i've been following that's not helping me achieve my goals lord jesus break it tonight break it tonight break it tonight in the next four minutes let's begin to pray in the name of jesus by the power of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus, that I that is not healthy, 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 
Jesus, much less name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Amen in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 We are going to go into uh, God has had our prayers tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we're going to go into personal praise. You can choose to unmute, uh, mute yourself and praise God in the language he understands. And we will come Thank back you. again. Thank praise you, the Lord. Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, yes, Lord, we we'll praise you, God. In the next ten minutes, Hallelujah. Yes, you reign in majesty. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Mighty God, faithful God. Oh, God. It's our enables. It's our Adam and Adam. My Adam and Adam. My Adam and Adam. Oh, you are good and you are my peace forever. Hallelujah. You are good. I'm so grateful, Thank you. 
Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Oh, this is wonderful. I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy for joining this call today. I don't know about you, but I learned so much, and I was exposed to so much. Thank you. I, I just want to take this few minutes to say thank you, everyone, for connecting. Thank you for 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 being here, and I hope that you learned and I, and God touched you in different ways. I want to say a big thank you to every Covenant Prayer Partners. I want to say thank you for Evergreen Family. I just want to say thank you also to everyone that worked behind the curtain to put this thing together. Yeah. May God name be praised in your life. May Amen. everything that you desire come to pass in the Amen. name of Jesus Christ. God bless Amen. you. And see you again very soon. God bless you. We Amen. are going to place a lot of things in the group. Please make sure you connect and join all the groups that, that you're supposed to join that will be pasted in the main group. If you're not in Covenant Prayer Partners, please, the, the, the link is up there. Please join us so that we can do this God's work together. God bless you again and have a wonderful Amen. evening and enjoy uh, the, the next quarter and uh, happy new, new month, month. Yeah. happy new month everybody bye for happy now happy new month thank you everyone all right bye hallelujah god bless you bye bye god bless you